back to your yoga practice. Um, today's practice is going to be focusing in on the feeling of acceptance and embracing impermanence. And by that I mean a really simple way to understand this idea and to sort of embody it in our mindset is that this too shall pass, right? Everything that we've experienced in life, everything that has been a joy or a sorrow and we've gone through the different peaks and valleys of our lives, all of that has changed over time and to embrace this process of change as an inevitable cycle of life. So we'll get started off today lying on your back. In a really comfortable position with your knees bent, feet to the floor. And just let your arms stretch out nice and wide so your chest is open, your back is resting heavily into the mat. And just take a few moments to let your attention fully settle into how you feel in this moment. And again, just keeping in mind the fact that this too will change. Whatever state of mind or mood state is present, it's inevitably going to change in some way. One way we can start to embrace this in the physical body is by noticing the cycle of the breath going in as you fill up and turning it into an exhale as it empties out. So take three more fully conscious breaths to arrive. Hug your knees in towards your chest, giving yourself a little hug. And then just begin to hold your knees and roll around your sacrum. So find that triangular bone at the base of your spine and just make a big circle around the whole surface area. And then switch directions once you've gone about twice in one way, twice the other direction. And then extend your legs straight up towards the sky. Bring your hands down by your hips. And then slowly begin to lower your legs all the way forward towards the front edge of your mat. For five, four, keeping legs strong and straight. Three, two, navel to spine. And one, hug your knees back into your chest. And just take a break. Feel your body. And then place your right ankle on top of your left thigh. Bring your hands to the front of your left shin. And then rest your shoulders back down against the floor. Take a few breaths into your right outer hip. And again, whatever is here, whatever this sensation portrays, know that it's going to change. Over time, with breath, through experience, One more cycle into the sensation. And then release, bring the feet to the floor, just pause. And then take the second side, left ankle flexed and active, press it against the top of the right thigh, and then bring your hands to the back of the right thigh or the front of your right shin. And just settling back into the feeling of the breath noticing how each breath is its own full life cycle. And yoga really gives us this field of awareness to explore sensation and really notice how things do change over time throughout the practice. Release your feet back to the floor. Take a big breath in. Exhale it out. And then begin to press down into your feet, 
lengthen your tailbone forward and begin to lift your hips, coming into bridge pose or Situ Bandhasana. Take a little fuller inhale as you lift the chest, maybe bend the elbows and press the backs of the arms a little more firmly into the mat. And exhale one vertebrae at a time with as much control as you can. Release your spine back to the floor. Good. And then draw your knees to your chest, rock forwards all the way through the seat, coming onto all fours in tabletop position. Shoulders stack over your wrists, hips over your knees. And we're going to take three rounds of cat and cow. But inhale, roll the chest forward and up. Spread your sitting bones, ground the shins. Exhale, press the earth away and round. And just do that twice more, inhaling. Keep the inner palms heavy, collarbones spread wide, chest lifts. Exhale to draw the navel in, wrap the forehead towards the pubic bone. And then continue one more. And exhale, round, hollowing out through the low belly. And as you inhale, come back to a neutral position with your spine. And then tuck your toes, lift your hips up and back, come into downward facing dog, Adho Mukha Svanasana. Just bend the knees, lift your sitting bones up and back. And feel like your arms and legs are helping you to lengthen your spine. And just keeping in mind, as you're here, feeling the body, just be observant of how things shift. You're not going to be feeling the exact same way in this down dog compared to the last down dog of this practice. And this may, too, not be the best or the most full down dog that you've ever felt. But can you just be with what's here in this moment? Can you spread the toes, feel alive in your arms and legs, and relax through the eyes and the face? Inhale here. Exhale, step your right foot forward between the hands. Keep your back thigh lifted. Now you can be up onto your fingertips here or have your hands to the blocks. But just start to make the feet that are imprinted into the ground a little bit more firm. Let the hips feel light, relax your eyes, and feel like your torso is centered right between your two hips. Now start to make the hands a little bit lighter. You can either reach the arms back, which is a little bit easier, or take the arms forward for a little more of a challenge. While you're here, keep bringing your attention back to the breath. Keep anchoring your focus into what's changing moment by moment. Inhale, last breath, back thighs lifting up towards the ceiling. Then exhale, plant your hands, step back into down dog. And just feel in down dog. Notice what it's like to go back into this long extended shape. Breathing through the sides of the waist. Take an inhale here. Then exhale, left foot steps forward. Ground through your fingertips. Imprint your feet a little bit deeper into your yoga mat. So it should feel like the hips become a little more buoyant. And then as you do that, hugging the outer top thighs together, maybe start to float the fingertips. Maybe you take the arms forward, but wherever you are, just be there completely. Know that this is going to change, yet embrace being here. Last inhale. Good. Exhale. Hands to the floor. Downward facing dog. And then starting to walk the hands all the way back towards your feet as you come into a forward fold, Uttanasana, towards the back edge of your mat. And really let your head completely drop, bend the knees. Notice if it feels good to be in this position, can you just appreciate that it feels relaxing for many of us? And if it doesn't feel relaxing for you, notice that too is just another part of your experience that's likely to change over time. 
bring your hands to your shins and inhale, lengthen your heart forward. Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale as you fold deeply back in towards your legs. Uttanasana. Inhale, rise up, reach the arms to the sky, lift your heart. Exhale, surrender the hands back. Samastiti. And then one time through half of Surya Namaskara A, inhale, reach the arms up, grounding down through the feet. Exhale, bowing forward, bend the knees if it's helpful. Inhale, halfway lift, extend your heart forward, press the tops of the thighs back. Exhale, refold deeply into your legs, let the head release. Inhale, arms reach up. Feel the light through the sides of the waist. Exhale, soften the hands and gaze down the fingertips. Uh, inhaling, stretch arms up. Exhaling as you fold forward, Uttanasana. Inhale, halfway lift, Ardha Uttanasana. Then this time, keep your heels rooting back and down. Just walk your way back into downward facing dog. From your down dog, bring your little bend into both knees and take your left hand to the outside of your right calf or ankle and then start to straighten that right leg as you turn the chest making this a little bit of a twist. Keep your right bicep spinning forward towards the front edge of your mat and breathe. And then slowly releasing hands back, downward facing dog. And then second side, so the knees will bend, right hand reaches towards the left calf or ankle. And then start to straighten your left leg as you turn your chest, keeping your top thighs lifting back. Good. And then slowly release, hands to the floor. As you inhale, shift forward into your plank pose, reaching your heart forward. Keep the palms really firmly gripping the mat and your sternum lengthening forward. Good. Breathing here. Notice, can you tone the navel in a little bit more deeply? And notice whatever thoughts start to arise here in your plank pose. Can you maintain stability and strength? Firing up the arms as you hug them in towards one another know that this too will pass. Spin the inner thighs to the sky, take another inhale. Tailbone lengthens to the heels, exhale, lower your knees, and come all the way down to the floor. Good, so from here, bring your hands right in line with your front ribs. Press the tops of the feet back and down, inhale, scoop your chest forward and up. Notice what it feels like to open the chest, Feel the outer arms hug in, back of the neck is long. Exhale, slowly release all the way down. And we'll do this twice more. Keep your hands where they are and follow your breath, inhaling, navel to spine, chest lengthens forward and up. And exhaling lower to re-extend the front of the spine. One more time, inhaling. Exhaling to lower. Tuck your toes, press back through the plank, and into downward facing dog. Soften your gaze, let your eyes be nice and soft so that the gaze is wide. As you inhale, lift your heels up nice and high. Exhale, left knee bends, drive your right heel back and down. Try to get the center of the right heel into the mat. And just notice whatever sensation is there in that right calf. Embrace it now, knowing that it can change, and it will change. Go ahead and slowly lift the heels up. And as you exhale, right knee bends, drive the center of the left heel down. Feel the length of the sitting bones reaching up and back. Almost like you could send the breath into that left calf. Take one more cycle. Good. And then both heels lift up, inhaling. Then exhale, 
lower down to your knees and you can have a seat onto a block. So you come into Virasana Hero's Pose and as you draw the hips back and take the arms, interlace the palms and just open up through the chest. So feel collarbones spreading, front ribs draw in, tailbone lengthens down. Now if this is too much sensation and you're overwhelmed, you can grab a strap and pull the strap apart with the palms facing forward. But just breathing here for another breath or so, just feel the sensation and how it unfolds across the chest and the tissues of the arms, shoulders. And exhale, release, and just pause. Feel how the sensation changes. Just notice that in your physical reality. Reach your arms back once again. This time take the opposite grip, so the opposite interlace of the palms. Roll the chest open and again pull the arms back and apart with a little bend to your elbows. The front ribs stay knit in, chest is opening, last cycle of breath or two. Remember to keep your gaze soft and wide and then to unclench around the face or the mouth. Last breath, feel the presence of sensation in the shoulders, chest, and then release. Just feel the blood move back in. Feel the sensation of the muscles releasing that stretch. And then we'll plant the hands back in front of you, come into downward facing dog. From your downward facing dog, inhale, right leg lifts up and back. Exhale, draw knee to nose and step it through. And then you can either have your hands up uh, onto blocks or fingertips. And we're gonna straighten that back thigh so we're coming to a modified version of Parsvottanasana. Back heels lifted, right sitting bone draws up and back, left outer hip wraps forward and down. Now we're gonna be here for a little while. I really want you to stay with your breath and use this as an opportunity to watch sensations unfold. Notice how it changes subtly, moment by moment. And yet again, just highlighting the reality that everything that happens inevitably is changing. Whether it's a good experience, something we label as bad, or something that's neutral, something that's neither good nor bad. All of these things are shifting and having some sort of influence in the way we observe and experience whatever is appearing in consciousness. Take one more breath and firm the muscles of the legs around the bones, lengthening your heart forward, inhaling. Now as you exhale, bend your right knee, come back into a lunge, and you have your left hand down to the floor. Right arm reaches up, finding an easy twist. Spin the left bicep forward, draw the left shoulder blade down. Lengthen forward through the crown of the head. Take one more breath. Good, and then exhale, hands to the floor. Lower your back knee down. And then take your right foot a little bit more to the right so it opens up the hips. Left hand is your foundation. Right arm reaches back, finding the outer edge of the back foot. Now, make this an active stretch here. So you're gonna kick back into that hand with your left foot and then drag your left knee forward as you turn the chest. Again, embrace what's happening in this moment with the understanding that it will change. With the deep knowing that it will change. Last inhale, breathe into what is. Exhale, release, let it go. Plant your hands. Tuck your back toes, lift up and back, downward facing dog. Take a big breath as you lengthen your whole spine. Good. On your next inhale, left leg lifts up and back. 
and exhale knee to nose, step it all the way forward. But again, if you had blocks originally underneath your hands, great thing to set up and use to help support you. But then start to straighten your left leg. Make sure your feet are about hip width distance apart. And really trying to get the whole center of the left foot to root down as you lift the left sitting bone up and back. Keeping the work of the legs hugging and wrapping together. Firming the muscles of the legs around the bones. Take a few more cycles of breath and just be with the experience as it's unfolding. Maybe you find it pleasant, unpleasant, or neutral. But just be able to differentiate that, be able to distinguish that in your own experience. Take one more cycle of breath. Good, and then bend your left knee. So you come back into this low lunge. Right hand is your foundation. Ground through the left inner big toe mound, lift the right inner thigh, and then turn for three. Spinning open through the chest for two. And one, bring the hands to the floor, back knee to the floor. And then move the left foot a little more to the left. Take your right hand a little bit forward of your shoulder and then stretch your left arm back, finding the outer edge of the back foot. As you kick back, begin to drag the right knee forward and then scoop and turn the chest from the low belly. Feel the breath as an ever present reminder that the pose is never stagnant always something shifting or changing in the experience for us to attune to, to connect with. Release the back foot, hands come to the floor, step back into your down dog. And from your down dog, gaze forward, bend the knees. You can lightly step, walk, or hop your feet to your hands, coming into a forward fold. As you inhale, lengthen your heart forward, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, fold forward, Uttanasana. Inhale, take the arms up, reach to the sky. Exhaling, hands come to heart center. Good, bend your knees, inhale, come into Utkatasana, chair pose. Good, and then exhale, the hands come to heart. Shift weight to your left foot and then take your right toe straight out to the side. Good, now as you just keep weight onto this left hip, left foot rooting down, take your right toes forward and then slide them back. Try to stay steady into your left foot, right toe slide forward, right toe slide back. Good, bring the right toes forward one more time and then back, this time Right knee draws in, and then take your right ankle on top of your left thigh, so you're in a figure four. Now, I know this is a lot of work for this left hip, but stay with it if you can. Notice that it's just a sensation, and it's likely to change and shift over time with the breath. So you can bring the fingertips towards the floor. You can bring your hands to support the knee and the foot, or just keep your hands at your hips. Last three. Two, one, slowly rise up to stand, release the foot, and just pause to feel and appreciate the release of effort on the left side, in the left hip. And then bend your knees, second side, chair pose. Bring the hands to heart. And then shift weight to your right foot. Feel the center of the right foot connected into the mat. Left toes, toe tip straight out to the side. Slide the left foot forward. Slide it back. But whole time focusing in as you slide it forward, grounding into that right foot. Slide the left foot back. One more time, forward and back. This time keep the right knee bent, draw the left knee in. Take the left ankle on top of the right thigh. 
and then hands to hips or fingertips drop towards the floor. So this is a lot of work stabilizing with this right hip, but stay with it. There's a light at the end of the tunnel. This too shall pass. Breathing into whatever sensation is most present for you. And knowing too when it's necessary to back off, knowing and acknowledging when it's become too much and you've become distracted or lost in thought. But if you can sustain your focus, then stay with it. Slowly start to rise up. Release the left foot. And as you feel both feet grounding down, come back to noticing the release of the right hip muscles, right hip, outer thigh. Good. Bend your knees, inhale, come into a chair pose. Exhale, fold forward, Uttanasana. Inhale, halfway lifting. And then exhale, plant your hands, step back into your plank pose. Lower down, take a vinyasa or modify. Inhale, into the upward facing dog or cobra pose. Exhale, Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog. Three slow, fully present breaths. Noticing how different this down dog is, both in the space of your mind and in the physical plane from the first down dog of our practice. Just feel the difference if you were to take some sort of internal measurement. Go to inhale here. Exhale, step your left foot forward and turn your toes wide so you're at the outer edge, outer edges of your mat, you're facing the outer edge of your mat. And make sure that the outer edges of your feet line up with the outer edges of your mat so that they're parallel to the floor. Hands come flat to the mat or, or ground. And then bend your right knee and push your left heel away from you. So you're deepening the hips back, heart stays reaching forward. And then slowly, like you're pressing through mud or some resistance in every direction. And then bending left knee, deepening the groins back, push the right foot away from you. So you're actively pushing that right foot back. Good, and then slowly pressing to the center. Now, if you can, maybe grab the ankles or keep the hands on the floor as they are. If you grab the ankles, pull up against the ankles. Keep your weight forward so that the weight's centered in your feet. And then same thing, begin to bend the right knee, keep your sternum lengthening forward, push the left heel away from you. Again, slowly coming back through the center, and then over to the second side, trying to maintain balance and stability at the pelvis. A couple more times side to side. Really active inner and outer edges of the feet fully embracing the movement of the thighs, the hips, and the ankles is all interconnected. And one more time, each direction. Good, bring your hands back to the floor, chest lengthens forward, and then release your hands to your hips. Reach your chest forward, press into the feet, rise all the way up. Turn your right toes out, left toes follow, and we're going to take Virabhadrasana 2 with a deep bend into that front knee. And then reach the arms out wide. So we're going to be here for several breaths. And we're going to observe the ability to sustain awareness. Even while the pose might get more demanding or more challenging as time goes on. Keep reaching the arms apart. Feel like the shoulders can soften down and then recommit to your imprint of the feet into the floor. Notice how that charges up the legs. Eyes are softly looking down, the fingertips. Breath is soft, smooth, but invigorating. Take one more cycle here, feel the right outer thigh wrap down, the right heel draws in towards you. Inhale, straighten that front leg, turn the feet to face forward, bring the hands to the hips and pause. Take a breath in and out. And just feel completely 
the work through the body. Feel the residue of the previous posture. And then we'll take the second side. So left toes turn to face forward, right toes angle to follow, and then bend the left knee deeply, take the arms out wide. So again, the arms are helping to stretch the shoulders apart. The left outer thigh rolls down, and the left heel, you can almost think of it as like a drill going into the floor counterclockwise. Keep the arms stretching apart, gaze is soft down the left fingertips. And just three slow, controlled breaths. Noticing the little ripple of the breath through the body as the inhale changes to the exhale and a new cycle begins. Very well done. Last breath. Good. And slowly pressing that left leg to straight, turn the hips, or turn the feet to face forward, hands to hips. Take a big breath in. <sighs> Let it all out. Good. So you're going to turn the feet out about 45 degrees, bend your knees to follow the direction of your toes, and then bring your hands to your inner knees. Now, this is going to probably just be more of a feel good bit of work, but Again, notice what it's like to feel good and maybe embrace that. Embrace when things do feel good. So take your right shoulder and drop it in towards the left knee as you maintain that right hip moving back. Getting a wrap and twist through the right side of the spine. Then inhale back to center. Make sure the spine is long. Exhale, wrapping left shoulder towards the right knee. Try to keep the knees right over the heels. Inhale, back to center. One more time each side. Exhale, wrap and twist. Try to keep the toes soft. Good. Inhale, center. And exhale, twist. Good. Inhale, back to center. And rise up to stand. Straighten the legs. So for this next part, you might take a block if you need it for your triangle pose. We're gonna turn the right toes back, left toes follow, setting up for trikonasana triangle pose. Ground into the feet, feel the muscles of the legs draw around the bones like shrink wrap, and then reach forward with that right arm, right hip draws back, right sit bone wraps under, hand comes to block, left arm up. You can always bring that hand to the floor, but make sure there's the length in the bottom side waist. Good, for five, four, staying with the sensations, three, two, one, rise all the way up through the top arm and back heel, and spin around second side. So as you lengthen, Keep that left kneecap firm, right toes are angled slightly forward, and then reach, 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 hand comes to floor or block, right arm extends up. And then, so we're not rounding this right side, we're actually trying to lengthen the left waist to be even with the right side. Ground into the feet, last three. Soften the toes, relax the eyes for two, Maybe even look up towards that right thumb, last breath. Good. And then root the outer back heel, rise up through the top arm, spin the feet to face forward, step or hop the feet together. Good. And then come back towards the front edge of your mat. Take a big breath in. And full breath out. Bend the knees, chair pose, Utkatasana. Exhale, fold forward, Uttanasana. Inhale, halfway lift, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, plant your palms, step the legs back through the vinyasa or right away into down dog. You can always skip the vinyasa. Exhaling, downward facing down. From your dog pose, take your right shin forward into a pigeon pose. So right shin is down, and you can have your hands flat to the floor, 
pressing into the top of the left thigh. And just stay upright for a few breaths. Notice how this feels to be actively working in your pigeon pose. And just embrace that for a moment. And then start to keep that work, but lower down, changing the angle as you fold deeper into your pigeon. And come back to the full experience of the breath unfolding moment by moment. There's a subtle shift of energy back and forth. Notice what that feels like and how you can connect with that in the present moment. Everything is constantly in change. And that can be very difficult to manage and at the same time offers us an opportunity to shift our perspective, to recognize that this makes each moment that we're living slightly more precious, to cope with the understanding that things can change at any moment. Take one more deep breath down into that right hip, relaxing the face, the jaw, and the mouth. And slowly start to guide yourself back up. Then take your right leg back into a three-legged down dog, bending knee, rolling the hip open, and try to lift that right outer shin up towards the ceiling or sky. And then slowly release right foot back to meet the left. Find your downward facing dog and feel how it's different. Feel that once again it's changed in some subtle form. And then bring your left shin forward, pigeon pose. So the left outer shin pressing down, top of the right thigh roots down. And as you turn forward to fold, release all the way down. Sorry, bring yourself upright and just spend a few breaths upright and just feeling this position. As you press the right outer shin down, can you scoop up through the low belly, maintain that in the hips, now begin to fold a little deeper. Good. And this also gives us an opportunity to renew each day or each moment that we have, this opportunity to begin again. Because things are changing, there's always something new to check in with, to acknowledge. And using this practice as an opportunity to practice that, to embrace the impermanence, embrace the fact that everything is changing and will continue to change. giving us the motivation, perhaps, to stay more connected with the present so that we're really not too far off. Good. And then slowly begin to guide yourself back up and then come back into a downward facing dog. As you bend the knee, stack the hips open, you're your three-legged down dog, lift the outer shin towards the ceiling, take another breath, and then release, left foot back to the floor. And inhale, shift forward into a plank pose, and then exhale, lower all the way down. Good. From 
from here, press into the tops of your feet and begin to scoop your chest forward and up. Once again, finding that long shape of Shalabhasana. And then take the arms back, palms facing down towards the floor. Keep drawing the backs of the arms up, feel the back body engaging and root the tailbone back towards the heels. So feet are still on the floor for three, two, one, lower all the way down. Good, so I want you to take your forearms forward. We're gonna prepare for Sphinx pose. And your Sphinx, root down through the forearms and drag the arms back as you lift the chest forward and up. Now, maintain this balance in the pelvis and try to spin the inner thighs towards the ceiling so the pinky edges of the feet come to the floor. Keeping all of that work, keeping the arms dragging back, start to lift your legs just an inch or two off the ground. So the whole backs of the legs are firm and engaged. And then continue to scoop the chest up, 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 drawing the shoulders back and down. Good. Keep this lift of the chest, just release the feet down and then slowly start to lower yourself forward all the way back to the floor. And rest, just take a breath in and out, nice and easy. Good. And then setting up the same way again, coming back into your Sphinx pose. This time, as you're dragging the arms back, you lift the legs. Now keep the legs lifted, but bend your knees so the hamstrings start to really activate even more. And then, like there's some weights on your soles of the feet, start to push the feet up as you drag the arms back. Breathing here for five. Trying to lift the shoulders onto the back for four. Heart is up. Three, maybe even lift the elbows, pressing into the palms. Two, and one, slowly lower elbows, re-straighten the legs, lower the thighs, and come to the floor all the way down. Take a full cycle of breath, in and out. Notice the feeling of your back bend, and notice that this too will change. Everything is in constant change. And so this round, you're going to bend the knees if you're moving into Dhanurasana with me. Otherwise, you can stay with Sphinx Pose or some other variation. Grab the ankles, chin or forehead to the floor. Now start to press the pelvis down and kick back into your shins as you start to scoop the chest up. And then try to find the balance between the chest and shoulders opening and kicking back through the shins, lifting the soles of the feet for three, two, and one. Slowly release everything down. Take a full inhale. Ha! Ah, let it all go on the exhale. Bring your hands back in line with your chest. Press back to tabletop position and downward facing dog. In your down dog, again, press the thighs back, feel the facing dog, lower down to your knees. We're going to set up for camel pose, ustrasana. So I'd like you, if you have blocks, to take one block and wedge it between your inner thighs, and the second block, take it between your inner ankles behind you. We'll start with the back toes tucked under. And as you press into the balls of your feet, really feel like you can spin the inner thighs back and loop the tail towards the floor. Now bring both hands to your heart and just before you even start to move backwards, you're going to lift your heart up in towards your hands to open the canopy of the chest. Now take your hands, support your low back as you continue that upward trajectory of the spine. Heart rolls open, elbows draw in, Legs are firming for three. Lifting up and out of the pose for two. Front ribs stay in, last breath. And slowly come all the way upright. And take a seat back onto your heels. 
resting for a moment, feeling how this pose changes as you sit and observe. Good. So we're going to take the same thing. You can do it with or without the block. I just like to give you that option to feel the firming of the legs. Round two, we're going to do the same thing. Hands come towards the sacrum, lengthening tail towards the floor, inner thighs lengthen back, deepening the groins back, and then lift the chest, scoop the heart up, try to press down into your shins. This time maybe the hands come towards the heels, if you have the toes tucked. Breathing here, as the front ribs draw in, lengthen the back of the skull back, open the chest, last three. Two, and one, come up with control, and then back to a seat, one hand to your heart, one hand to your belly, just feel. Notice the full scope of your experience as it shifts moment by moment. Go ahead. And so last round, we're going to make it a little bit of movement here. So we're not going to go straight down the center. We're going to go in two different directions. So start with your right hand, or sorry, left hand on your chest, and then bring your right hand towards your sacrum for support. And you're trying to support the whole sacrum. And then as you start to reach up and back, you're going to take that left arm and extend back, keep rooting down, and eventually take the right arm back. Chest is opening, collarbones are wide, and then the left hand comes back to the sacrum, right hand comes to the heart, and come back up. Take a breath before we move on to the second side. Now, if you want, you can just change this up a little bit by taking that left hand and instead of holding your sacrum or your back, bringing it back to the heel. So it might look like this the second time. Inhale, lift the chest up into the hand, tailbone lengthens to the floor, and then maybe the left hand moves towards the left heel, using that for more support. Take the right arm back, reach and open the chest, and then eventually take that right hand to the heel, and then left arm reaches up, and back, good, bring the hands to the heart, come all the way up, and just sit, sit for a moment, bring a hand to the heart, hand to the belly, or just rest the arms, whatever feels most facilitating of your resting with awareness. Give yourself an opportunity to fully examine how the body feels after that work. Good. So I'm going to have you come into a seat, taking your legs straight out in front of you. Those of you who feel like you're falling backwards here and you need a little more support, I'd like you to sit up to the edge of a blanket. Otherwise, you're going to take left toes and turn them out. Draw that left heel, sole of the foot in towards the right inner thigh. And then inhale, take the arms up. Exhale, fold forward towards that right shin, right knee. And keeping your breath smooth, noticing what is changing. See if you can follow the breath each cycle so that you're not missing anything. You're fully embraced and connected with the present moment. Drive the right heel forward, ground the right sitting bone, take one more breath. Inhale, come up halfway. Exhale, release. Now just take your left heel and move it a little closer towards your right sitting bone as you bend the right knee and bring the sole of the foot out in front of this left knee. So we're setting up for Ardha Matsyandrasana, half Lord of the Fishes pose. Ground your right foot, ground your right sitting bone and take your left arm to the outside of that right thigh or just hook it with the elbow as you turn, turn, turn from the low belly. Each inhalation just feel 
a lifting and lightening of the spine. And each exhale, feel a rotation or rinsing out of those spinal muscles, of the abdomen, the internal viscera. Inhale, gaze forward. Exhale, release. Extend both legs out. And then turn the right toes out. Draw that left heel in, setting up for Janya Shishas on the second side. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, fold forward over your left leg. And in this pose, you're reaching that left heel away, grounding the left sit bone as you lengthen the front of the spine. So there's a constant loops of energy, loops of activity that we're creating in each asana. Take one more cycle here, fully embracing what is, not wishing for it to be any different. And then inhale, lift up halfway. Exhale, release. Take your right heel, just slide it a little closer to your left sitting bone. So my right knee is right in between my two sitting bones. Left foot comes to the outside of the right knee. With your right arm, you can hook that left knee, drawing it towards you. Left fingertips back behind you. Those of you that want to take the arm outside the thigh, you're welcome to do that as well. We'll breathe here for three, two, and one. Inhale, gaze forward. Exhale, release. Stretch your legs out in front of you and prepare for your final rest in Shavasana. So letting the legs extend out, giving your body lots of space to open up. And really just letting go of all effort here. Notice this drastic shift between the efforting aspect of your practice and this part right here in this moment. And seeing if you can connect with a sense of wide open acceptance of what is in this moment. Whether it's pleasant, unpleasant, or neutral, can we begin to approach whatever arises with a sense of balance and equanimity. Having the clearness of mind to respond in a way that is beneficial not only to ourselves but to all those who that we come across and with all those that we care about and love. carefully starting to watch the breath. Once again, if you become lost in thought or if you 
feel your attention is at all scattered or imprecise. Just resting and receiving each breath through each cycle, moment by moment. Now I'll start to take a little deeper breath, filling the body with life, energy, enthusiasm. And on the exhale, feeling relaxed, calm, and clear. Just starting to move through your hands and feet, extending the arms, stretching out through the legs, just encouraging movement. And when you're ready, draw your knees in towards your chest one at a time and slowly roll to your side and guide yourself back up to a comfortable seat. And then we'll bring the hands together at heart center into Anjali Mudra as you salute and honor the essence of yoga within yourself. And to always keep in mind that whatever it is that we're experiencing, good, bad, or indifferent, it's going to change and to fully embrace being in the present moment with whatever experience is provided in consciousness. Thank you so much for joining me today. Namaste.